Welcome to the Haskell Ring, the series where we solve programming problems, but you know, in Haskell. After the release of the first episode of Haskell Rank, a couple of people suggested me to try Code Wars instead of Hacker Rank. I heard about this platform a couple of times, but I never tried that. So yeah, today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Usually my Haskell Rank episodes are sort of semi-scripted because I prepare for them. I just, at least I solve the problem once to understand how to solve it. Uh, but I guess this time is going to be a little bit different. I want to like sort of capture my first experience with that platform. Off screen, I created a Code War account, so it's not really a raw reaction to the platform. I sneak peeked a little bit. Anyway, let, let's just go there. Code Wars, challenges and katas. I don't even know what is a kata. Can somebody explain me what is a kata? Kata, kata. It's a Japanese word, are detailed choreographed patterns of movements practiced either solo or in pairs. Okay, I got it. This platform already feels like a role playing. It's kind of interesting that when I tried to create an account, it didn't allow me to do that until I pass some kind of a challenge. And that actually something that distinguish that from other platforms I tried before. I already solved the challenge. I wonder if this challenge is different every time. Uh, apparently it is not. And by the way, I really like this challenge because to solve that, you have to understand Haskell. Obviously, this is a function that multiplies two numbers and literally the body of this function, you multiply two numbers and you return them. This is literally how you would implement that thing in Python. How would you implement it in Python? Multiply a, b, return a uh, star b. So what's wrong in this particular example? Well, you can only know that if you understand Haskell. Let's actually open Haskell Ripple and see what's wrong with that. In Haskell Ripple, I already used this command hundreds of times. There's a command uh, colon t, which shows the type of the expression. So if you multiply two numbers, What's the type of this expression? The type of this expression is something that is a number. But in our case, we don't just multiply two numbers. We return it. And return is not a keyword in Haskell. It is a function that takes something and returns that something right in M, which is a monad. So return wraps an expression in a monad. But the signature of this function tells us that uh, this function should return an integer, not an integer uh, wrapped in monad. That means this is completely wrong and we have to remove return and do block and this is how you solve that this example is genius because you won't be able to solve it without understanding haskell and how it handles side effects it's just beautiful anyway i already linked my account with github and stuff so i can actually log in by the way whoever watches that on a video if it's going to become a video i'm not even sure maybe the footage is going to be so uninteresting that i'm not going to release it i record that live on twitch so if you want to see how those videos are recorded live just yeah join my channel or whatever there we go i think you cannot see what's going on there probably you want to so let me hide my tentacle guy and i guess to actually start solving katas you have to click on kata like the ui is kind of overwhelming i don't really understand it but whatever so you can search katas you can sort by language and stuff like that. Hacker rank is way more simple. Also, as you can see, there's lots of social network features. We have like likes, stars, probably I can follow people. So it's just like a social network for code competitions and stuff like that. So let's actually click on something and try to solve that. Get the middle character. Let's read that and try to understand it. You are going to be given a word. Your job is to return the middle character of the word. If the word's length is odd, return the middle character. If the word's length is even return the middle two characters oh that's actually pretty pretty straightforward can you solve that in haskell okay so it says haskell and if i click here oh i can choose different languages okay so but we're gonna stay on Haskell. we are haskell people so what's the input a word a string of length zero well, it's, that's actually a pretty small string so i expected it to be bigger a little bit in javascript you may get slightly more than 1000 in some test cases due to an error in the test case ha huh. okay at least they admitted that they have an error in the test case this is great. Oh, you don't need to test for this. This is only here to tell you that you don't need to worry about your solution timing out. <laughs> it's kind of funny, like your solution may not pass because of our mistake, but don't worry about that. Just just don't worry. Okay, how do I solve that? Okay, I can see the big train button. All right, here we go. Tips cutter trainer. Boring. 
go away. So they tell us to implement a simple function from string to string, and that should return a middle string. I don't want to use this editor. I don't really like the editors of, of, of the platforms. So I'm going to use Emacs because Emacs is my best friend. So I'm going to straight up steal that code. Yoink, mine code now. Okay, somebody tells me in the chat that in, on the top right is an Emacs button. Okay, here's my problem with websites trying to mimic Emacs key bindings. One of the main key bindings of Emacs are navigating through the code. To go forward, you press Ctrl F. I know it's really unconventional because in most of the software these days, these days, this is really important. Control F is incremental search, but in Emacs is just go forward. Emacs inherited that from old days and it stands for forward. So yeah, they, they choose Control F because it's F forward. And to go backwards, guess what? You have to press Control B. And another pair of key bindings is Control N and Control P. So most of the websites that claim to handle Emacs key binding, they don't handle Control N and Control P. They just don't. <sighs> But these key bindings, they are hardwired in my brain. I cannot use Emacs without these key bindings. I, I just cannot. Like, this is not Emacs for me. And another important key binding for me is Control w which basically kills everything from an invisible mark somewhere that I can put to the current cursor. And most of the websites don't handle that as well. So every time I try to use a website that claims to support Emacs key bindings, I either create a new window or close the current tab. So no, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use uh, the uh, like vanilla Emacs because I didn't see a single website that is able to correctly support these key bindings for Emacs, those fundamental key bindings for Emacs. I hope I explained that well. Cheers for Emacs. Okay, so what we have to do, we have to just implement that simple function. It's really interesting, like I define this function as undefined and this is a really interesting variable in Emacs and it's a polymorphic variable, so that means it doesn't really have a particular type, it's just any type you want. It doesn't really mean whatever it means in JavaScript, for example. Undefined has a value that can adapt to any type. For example, you can create a variable with whatever type you want, for example, integer, right? And assign an undefined to it and this program is still going to compile. Undefined can be assigned to any kind of type, but when you try to execute that program, you will get an exception. Undefined is needed to make your not yet implemented program compilable to check types. So it's really useful when your program is not implemented yet and you want to just check how at least the implemented part compiles. So that's why I just put undefined here and just check that it all compiles so I can continue with my reasoning on how to solve this problem. Okay, let's imagine that we have some kind of string. Hello world, for example. Uh, so what's length of the string, by the way? So we need two cases when the amount of of, uh, characters is odd and when the amount of characters is even. So this is odd. Okay, that's actually pretty great. So, so let's store that particular string to a variable s. It's really important to remember that in Haskell, string is a list. Can we actually get some information from info, for example? Yes, it is. So you see, in standard library of Haskell, string is defined as an alias of list. What that means? That means all of the operations that defined for lists, they work for strings. And this is really important. And for list, we have a an operation double exclamation mark which takes a list number and returns an element of the same type as elements of the list and this is exactly the operator that we'll need that operator takes nth element of the list let's try to take the zeroth element of the list it's h first one two so you see it does exactly what we want so we can use that operator to take the middle character of the string how can we do that so let's calculate the length of the s string so it's 11 can we divide it by two no, we cannot, because division works on fractional things, so anything that can be divisible. But integers are not fractional, so for that we have to use diff. Slash works with things that can be fractioned, and diff works with integral things. Let's take le length again and divide it by 2. So now it's 5. And after that we just take that character, which in our case is just a space. This only works for strings with odd amount of characters, but we also have to handle the case with even amount of characters. I guess for even amount of characters, uh, for example, if we imagine that S 
had an even amount of characters. Hello it doesn't have an even amount of characters. Let's use hell. This expression would point at the second character, which is 0, 1, 2, basically the character after the middle of the string. And that means that we have to return two characters, this one and the one before the middle something like that, which is exactly the middle two characters of the string. We just have two cases and we have two solutions for those cases. So I would like to store the amount of characters in the string in a separate variable called n. And let's just check if something odd or even. We can, we can just use even and odd, which take integral things, just answer the question whether it's even or odd. When s is odd, we just have to return the n divided by two character of the that string. Otherwise, we have to return two characters. Oh, maybe I want to store the n divided by two to a separate variable as well, so I don't have to copy paste that too much. I'm going to call this variable half n. Uh, I think now it's just easier to work with. Am I? I'm an idiot. I have to apply odd to n, not to s. Oh, so yeah, I applied a function that takes an integer to a string. So yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm a professional software developer, by the way. So yeah, now I just take uh, the half of half n minus one and just half n. So that should work. Let's try, let's see if it compiles or not. It doesn't compile. I wonder why, because here I return a character when the function expects us to return a string. As already said, string is the least of characters. So to turn a single character to a string, we just have to wrap it into a list and that will work. So yeah, we'll fix that problem. So let's actually try to copy paste that back to the system and run a couple of tests. I also can edit the code that is going to test things, which is great. And from the test, I can see that we have cases when the amount of characters is one. I think I didn't check for that one. I wonder what's it, what is going to return. Let me actually quickly check that. Uh, get middle, for example, a one. It should return just that character. Can it be an empty string. So it cannot be an empty string. Great. Let's actually run sample tests and see if it passes. Okay, it passes. And let's attempt that. Yay, we solved our first kata. So what's my conclusion on Code Wars? I think it's a pretty great uh, programming role playing. Okay, apparently chat just told me that I didn't finish that because I also have to click submit final. Oh, okay, so <laughs> let's submit it. Did I win? How satisfied are you with this kata? I'm not satisfied at all. Did I win or not? Where's any kind of UI indication that it's okay, it's great. Did it pass all of the tests? Okay, my chat tells me that I won. I'm gonna assume that I won.